So in this tutorial, we're going to look at Snell's law of refraction and understand how we can derive it from Fermat's principle. As in the previous tutorial, we're going to use the formulation of Fermat's principle that can be found on this Wikipedia page. That is, that the path taken between two points by a ray of light is the path that can be traversed in the least time. Now, a great and well-known analogy for what we're about to do here is the idea of imagining you're at the beach and there's a swimmer in, in the sea down here who's in trouble. The lifeguard up here sees that the swimmer's in trouble and has to try to get to the swimmer as fast as possible. Now, the lifeguard can run faster over land than he can swim in sea. So what path should he take? to get to the swimmer in the least time. Here are three possible paths that he could take, and I hope it's obvious that path one here is not sensible at all. He'll get to the water's edge in the least time, but they'll spend a long time uh, traveling through the water to get to the stricken swimmer. Path two might be a better path. Path three may well be a better path, because uh, while it's a longer distance in the land, he can travel faster on the land than he can in sea. So our question really is, what will be the best path to get from where the lifeguard originally is to where the swimmer is? That is our analogy for what we're about to be doing, because obviously if we think of this as a source of light, and this is the destination for the light, as it crosses from one medium, the land here, but let's say air, into another medium, the sea here, but let's say glass, where its speed will change, then which path will it take in order that it gets from here to here in the least time. Well, let's set it up a little bit more um, traditionally then in terms of light crossing from one medium to another. So we have medium one above the line with refractive index N1 and medium two below the line with refractive index N2, which means the speed of light will be different in the two media. As the speed of light in a medium with refractive index N is given by V equals C over N, where C is the speed of light in a vacuum and N is the refractive index. Now, let's add a couple of distances to our diagram. A and B, as shown here. And let's add a ray of light taking an arbitrary path, such as this one here, which crosses the boundary between the media at this distance X. So now we have our initial setup, and remember what we're trying to do is find the path for which the time of travel between A and B is least. In other words, what we need to do is find what distance X we need for the time taken for light to get from here to here to be the least. And the way in which we'll do that is by deriving a formula for the time taken for light to get from A to B, and then using our usual methods in calculus to minimize the value of the time by varying the value of x. So the first thing you should try to do here is find a formula for the time it takes for light to get from A to B. I'm about to show you what that formula is, but if you're trying to teach yourself, now would be a good time to pause the video. So to find a formula for the time it takes for the light to get from A down to B, We'll break it down into two parts, the time it takes to get from A to the boundary and the time it takes to get from the boundary to B. Now the time for the first part will simply be using time equals distance over speed. The distance is A squared plus X squared square rooted and if we say the speed in medium one is V1 then the time taken for that first part here is given by this formula. To work out the time taken for this second part here, I've realised I've left off one crucial uh, measurement on this diagram, which is this. Capital L being the horizontal distance between A and B, as in here. Now to get the time for this second part, using the same time equals distance over speed, I will find that the time here is this distance, which is now L minus X squared plus B squared, all square rooted, that is, as I say, this distance here, it will be that 
divided by the speed in the second medium, which we might call V2. Therefore, the total time that we're talking about here to get from A to B is, I'll call it capital T, T equals T1. plus T2. And this is now what we were trying to get to at this stage. A formula for the time it takes for light to go from A to B via this route which crosses the boundary at distance x. You'll note that in this entire equation for T there's only one variable x. A L, B, V1, V2 are all fixed. So this is an equation for T purely in terms of the variable X. So then our next step is to minimise the value for T as we vary X. And we do that, as you will know from your calculus, by differentiating this expression for T with respect to X and setting the result equal to zero. In other words, Solving dt by dx equals zero will give us those values of x for which the time to cross from a to b is either a minimum or a maximum. And that's something we'll come back to in a moment because we know that we're looking for the minimum, not the maximum. So now what you need to do is differentiate t with respect to x, set it equal to zero and solve for x. If you're trying to do this as a tutorial, now is the time to pause and have a go at doing that. If you have paused and have got stuck or you've got no idea, then a clue might be that to differentiate this um, expression for t, you will need to use the chain rule or the function of a function rule. And if you want to pause now and have a go, please do. So the expression you should end up with for dt by dx should look like this. If your expression looks a little bit different, it may just be the way in which you've written it. It may be exactly equivalent to this, so it is worth checking that before going back over all of your working. Now you'll remember that we're trying to solve dt by dx equals zero. So if we set this equal to zero, then what we're actually saying is that this following equation must now hold. In other words, simply that this term here is equal to this term here if this whole expression is equal to zero. So we now need to solve this particular equation to find those values of x for which t is a maximum or a minimum. But before charging off trying to solve this quite complex algebraic equation, let's remember that what we're trying to do here is get to Snell's law by using Fermat's principle. In other words, we're trying to get to this particular equation through the methods that we've used here so far. You might want to pause the video here if you think you can see where we're going. Uh, in particular, if you watch the previous tutorial on using Fermat's principle for proving the law of reflection. But if you can't, then let's have a little look at how what we might do next rather than solving this very difficult looking algebraic equation. If we go back to our diagram at the top and we add in now what we might traditionally call theta 1 and theta 2, which would look like this, then you should be able to see that sine theta 1 and sine theta 2 are given by these two expressions. If you need to take a moment to pause the video just to double check that, then please do. Now what this of course means is that our expression down here for um, what happens when we set dt by dx equal to zero can simply be rewritten as this, which looks much, much simpler and very close to where we're going. The final ingredient is simply knowing that the speed of light in a medium is related to its refractive index simply by the formula V equals C over N where c is the fixed speed of light in a vacuum, v is the speed in the medium, and n is the refractive index. So in other words, this equation now becomes this. And we can see 
that very simply crossing out, cancelling out the speed of light in the vacuum leaves us with the actual equation that we are after for Stahl's law, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. So we are almost there. Only almost, because what we've shown so far is that if n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2, as in here or here, then the time taken for light to get from A to B is a maximum or a minimum, because dt by dx being equal to 0 only gives us a maximum or a minimum. This could therefore be the condition required for the maximum time from A to B rather than the minimum time. Well, like in my previous tutorial, I would say rather than going through some complex calculus to prove that this is a minimum, all we have to do is say, well, what if I send x right the way off the right-hand side of the diagram or the left-hand side of the diagram? In other words, if we let x go to plus infinity or minus infinity, clearly the time is going to be much longer than what I've got here. So this must therefore be a minimum because we found other times that are longer. It can't be a maximum because we can find other times that are longer. And there you have it. That's the end of the tutorial. I hope that all made sense to you. Please do feel free to comment otherwise.